So with the Oscars about to come up, a lot of people are wondering, is Spider-Man No Way Home going to be nominated for Best Picture? In fact, I'll go out on a limb and say that there are a lot of people saying that it deserves to be nominated for Best Picture or to even win Best Picture, an award that very few movies can even say they won. Or not very few, but very few compared to how many movies come out in general. But um, a lot of people are saying that if, if Spider-Man No Way Home doesn't, at least get nominated for best picture that that's proof that comic book movies are are seen as lesser in the industry and today i'm gonna debunk all of that because i think it's absolutely stupid <laughs> like i don't want to be that guy but that's a pretty stupid accusation you're putting on the oscars and the academy in general and you know it's some it's a narrative i've heard for so long that i've never heard have a, any actual proof or any actual information on it but before i start off today's video i do want to ask to my returning subscribers and to the brand new subscribers to the brand new people watching this video yeah, please smash that like button hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bells that way you can be notified for future content here on the channel my name is isaac and i'm the host of your multiverse of movies and please join the membership program it is only 99 cents a month and help support the channel and you'll be entered in a robert pattinson the batman giveaway you see this funko pop right here this can be yours all you have to do is hit that join button down below you'll be a member and again it's only 99 cents a month so and i'm gonna do this in like two months when the batman comes out so that way you guys can have a brand new robert pattinson funko pop um and you also get a shout out at the end of every one of my videos. If you go watch my last couple of videos, I give shout outs to anyone who's a member. So please join the membership program and comment down below after the video and let me know your thoughts on what I have to say. But anyways, look, to the people who have seen my top 10 list, I didn't put Spider-Man No Way Home there, but I did enjoy Spider-Man No Way Home. A lot of people know I'm a sucker for Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. And look, I'm spoiling it because at this point, if you haven't seen it, then you don't care. But I love Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. I love Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. I love Tom Holland Spider-Man. I really enjoyed this movie, and I think it's a pretty good film. And look, even if it gets nominated, let's say tomorrow the list comes out and we see Spider-Man No Way Home is nominated for Best Picture. If that's the case, then hey. Good job on, on Spider-Man, good job on Marvel, good job on all that. But I've been seeing this narrative on Twitter, Instagram saying that Spider-Man No Way Home has to be nominated for Best Picture because of of how because look let's let's face it spider-man no way home was insanely important for the industry as a whole because during the pandemic uh the whole theatrical business was struggling was struggling and spider-man no way home I mean, during time period, you did see Godzilla vs. Kong doing decent. You saw Shang-Chi doing well. You saw all these other movies doing well. But then we got Spider-Man No Way Home. And one of the biggest questions during the pandemic, and if you guys watch my old videos, you'll see me asking this question. But I always ask, is it possible for a movie to even make a billion in the pandemic? And look, only like 40-something movies have ever gone to that billion-dollar club. And during a pandemic that just seemed very unlikely and even fast and furious 9 that movie fast and furious 9 didn't crack a billion and that and that franchise has had a couple of billion dollar hits already so it's it, it is it is questionable you know is it even possible because during a pandemic there are less theaters available uh more people are worried about going to the theaters so it is a, a good question to be asked and spider-man no way home within the the first teaser trailer already broke records with his viewerships and then the ticket sales i remember i stayed up all the way to 2 a.m just to secure my opening day tickets uh <laughs> i couldn't even secure imax opening day. I had to i had to get it for the next and the next day to get imax but um you know spider-man no way home did the impossible which was bring a billion to the box office during a freaking pandemic do you guys understand how impossible that was? And notice, and it deserved it because of all the hype it had, you know, all the nostalgia. You know, you had Alfred Molina coming back as Doc Ock. You had Willem Dafoe returning as Goblin. Uh, then you had the rumors of Toby and Andrew returning, which they, in fact, did return. You had all that, and it, it didn't fail. It succeeded. A, a lot. Of, and Spider-Man's one of the most popular characters of all time, especially in the last 20 years. So it makes sense that this movie made a billion. 
and noticeably it deserves credit for for having bring back because a lot of people message me telling me hey guys because a lot of my subscribers message me a lot of my subscribers messaging me isaac it was so good to go back to the theaters it was so good you were right about the theatrical experience i haven't been there since 2020 early 2020 and it, it, feel, it felt great going back and i loved hearing those messages because spider-man no way home truly unified the movie going audiences together to finally support a movie once and for all and to give it the boost it deserves and this movie did succeed in bringing back people to the theaters and it did succeed in at least saving the movie theaters as a whole um and it succeeded in a lot of things that nobody expected to be possible but the real question is does it deserve the best picture nomination i i'm actually going to say this right now I don't think any movie definitively has ever deserved a Oscar nomination. There are movies you watch that you're like, oh, yeah, this movie deserves like Godfather, Godfather Part 1 and Part 2. You go watch those movies and you're like, heck, yeah, these movies kind of deserve it. Um, but even then, at the end of the day, the voting, if you, the people who are voting these movies in, who are real journalists, who are real people in this profession, who watch over 30 movies a year. Like, I watch a lot of movies, but I don't watch nearly as much as they do. These people spend their entire careers learning about film, uh, studying film. To me, when you say that they that Spider-Man No Way Home definitively deserves it just because what it did behind the scenes, to me, you have to really question the merit of what, what does best picture mean? Because if you're one of those people who nominate movies, you got to be as authentic as you can. If you deem Spider-Man No Way Home in your top 10, great, then, th then it deserves it. But if you as a critic say, hey, look, I don't think this movie deserves to be in my top 10. It, it wasn't one of my favorite movies of, all, of, of this year, so I'm not going to put it in my top 10. But yet you do it just because of how historical it was in the background. Then right there, the whole award nomination for Sp for Spider-Man No Way Home means nothing. To me, it means nothing. Because to me, I on the only thing any critic, any reviewer, even you guys, the people who run like maybe an Instagram account or a YouTube channel like me, even us small creators, the thing you have to do when you review a movie or a show or whatever is be truly authentic to what your experience was. Because everyone's experience is different film is subjective i don't get why people still debate me on this but all film is is it's not this isn't debatable all film is subjective based on our different life experiences some people are gonna love dune some people are gonna like last night in soho but some people are not because everyone has a different life experiences for example some people love stories of of um fatherhood some people love stories about uh, people struggling through hard times. Guess what? Because that is a person's experience when it comes to a movie. Some people are able to handle that. But not all people handle that movie. That's why I always say films are subjective. You cannot say a movie is objectively better than another. Because that is not true. All film is subjective. And Spider-Man No Way Home is no different. And look, if the Oscars decide... Uh, during the awards, they're like, hey, we want to thank Spider-Man No Way Home for doing great, uh, for bringing back people to the theater, to the theaters, you know, saving the theatrical business. If they do that, great. That would be an honor. That'd be awesome. And it's probably going to win an Oscar or at least get nominated for like VFX or something like that. But if we're talking best picture, because the award for best picture is the best movies of that year. And if the critics deem it not to be the best movie of the year, and I see a lot of people saying, well, how could they? This movie is objectively the best movie of the year. That's not true because, again, film is not objectively true. Anybody, who, any critic will tell you this. Any critic will tell you this. All film is subjective. It, because want, want me to show you proof of how you can tell a movie is subjective? Go to your, like, five friends, six friends. I don't know. It, it can be three, two friends. I don't know how many friends you want to tell this. Go ask them, what is your favorite movie of all time? And I guarantee you all of them will have a different answer. My close friend group, I've asked them before, what's their favorite movie? One of them said Logan. The other said Watchmen. The other said Terminator Judgment Day. They all have different perspectives on films because that is their experience and that is their subjective point of view 
on films. It's not an objective thing, and the same applies to critics. And look, again, the people saying that Spider-Man No Way Home deserves the best picture, a lot of these people only watch like four, five, six movies a year, ten movies at most. And look, I'll admit this right now. I've only watched like, I can't remember how many I've seen, but I go to the movies at least twice a month, once a month, somewhere around that period because i love the theatrical business and even i deem myself not to be worthy enough to be a crit a a uh, oscar critic i i deem myself not to be an oscar journalist because i should be if i want to be in that position then i should be watching at least most of the movies that came out that year and a lot of these critics watch these smaller movies like the green knight i can guarantee you most of the people saying spider-man no home deserves a best picture nomination haven't seen the green knight I can guarantee you that or the tragedy of Macbeth or King Richard or or West Side Story. I can guarantee you a lot of these people haven't seen these films because they're more just, you know, and it's understandable as a consumer. You're going to go watch a movie you find interesting, not a movie that you're just told to go watch, obviously. But at the end of the day, you have to look at yourself and think, why does Spider-Man No Way Home really deserve a best picture? Is it because of its story and all that? Is it because this? Is it because that? But when I hear the excuse that it deserves it just because it made a billion in the box office, then guess what? Endgame should have been nominated for best picture. Guess what? Um, Freaking uh, two Fast and Furious. I think two Fast and Furious movies have gone to billion dollar mark. I guess those movies deserve to be nominated for best picture. Heck, I don't know. Black Widow deserves best picture. I don't know. It's according to that logic. And I'm sorry. The To me, best picture should be about the movies they deem the best of that year. Not what made the most money. Because if it's about money, then guess what? The the whole best picture nomination thing means it's pointless at that point. And look, I'm, I'm coming from somebody who liked Spider-Man No Way Home. I really enjoyed that film. Go watch my review. I was saying how much I liked it. Go watch my spoiler discussion. I like this movie. It's a movie that made me tear up. It's a movie that made me tear up. But even I look at it and think, is it really worthy of Best Picture? And look, again, if it does get nominated, great. Then that, that means that the critics put it as... They, that it's their one of my, their favorite movies. And I always hate when people use the excuse, "Well, the critics are wrong, and the fans are the ones that are right." Dude, you're BSing yourself when you say something like that. S- critics are like fans. The only difference between critics and fans is that that's their job, and they watch a lot more movies than we do per year. Like that's the only difference. And, and I hate when people are like, the critics are wrong. They're paid off. They're Disney shills and all that. A lot of this isn't even backed up by actual evidence. I've always noticed that. A lot of this is never backed by real, true, hardcore evidence. It's always just people who can't accept that some movies are just not going to be nominated for Best Picture. And this whole idea that the comic book industry is is marginalized by, by Hollywood or the Oscars per se. Like, I, I have a friend of mine and we were... I th- we were just calling each other and I told him, Hey, I, I have a theory. I actually believe the Batman has a chance for being nominated for best picture. And he told me that it's not possible because the Oscars don't take comic book movies seriously or big blockbusters in general, which is completely, completely wrong in every way. And I asked him, Hey, could you provide me proof of that? Never. He didn't provide me any proof at all. <laughs> and, and I told him, no, it's just because they just don't deem that movie that came out that year. That just so happened to be a comic book movie. They didn't deem it to be the best of that year. Because if that was true, then why did Heath Ledger win Best Supporting Actor? Then why did Joaquin Phoenix win Best Actor in his year? These were actors who play comic book roles. And it's like, if if that was the case, then why 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 did these two win awards? And then Black Panther got nominated for Best Picture back in 2018. It's like, the Oscars don't have an agenda against comic book films. It's just that those movies just don't happen to be there. It's like, I, I don't get what's... It's it's crazy to hear all that. It's like James Gunn. James Gunn's never had a movie get nominated for Best Picture. Does that mean the Oscars have an agenda against James Gunn? Obviously not. So why are we putting this comic book issue in a pedestal where it just doesn't make sense to me? And again, I'm coming from somebody who likes Spider-Man No Way Home. I just think this whole narrative that that Spider-Man No Way Home deserves to be nominated for Best Picture just solely based on how much money it made and solely based on 
on bringing back people to the theaters. I think that's a stupid narrative. And look, I get if the Oscars decide, hey, we're going to thank Spider-Man No Way Home. We're going to be like, hey, thank you guys for bringing people back to the theaters. If they do that, great. But if they're if the Oscars just decide, let's just put Spider-Man No Way Home there just because they did this, that, then, then the whole Best Picture award means practically nothing at that point. To me, again, Best Picture is about the best movies of that year. Or whatever the critics deem it to be the best pictures, or the best movies of that year. And every year I feel like people don't recognize the movies that win. Like Nomadland. I know a lot of people didn't know what Nomadland. Like I remember I had somebody tell me, how did Nomadland win? It's like it, that movie, I don't even know that movie. Well, because you didn't watch it. The critics did and they liked it. Doesn't mean you have to like it, but you know, you can't just say a movie deserves a nomination when you don't even watch the other movies and look i'm i'm guilty of it there's like the green book green book uh like one like two or three years ago i remember i didn't even know what that movie was and i just checked it out and i quite liked it um but it's 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 something that us in the movie fandom that's one of our biggest mistakes we it's uh, like i remember um there's this youtube friend i have that says that the oscars are or the critics are just not they don't know the fans and I, and I always told him, you know, I asked him, you know, why do you say that? And he said, because they're not nominating the movies that the fans like. And I told him, you do realize that critics are fans. The only difference between critics and fans is that critics get paid to do this. And they watch a lot more movies than us. They, that's just the truth. Just because you deem a movie to be nominated doesn't mean that these critics can't nominate these movies. Um, and it's simple. And look, if I was like, you guys already saw my top 10 list. I don't think Spider-Man No Way Home was a top 10 best movie of the year. I don't even think it was the third. I mean, I don't even think it's the second best Marvel movie. I'd still think Shang-Chi Eternals are good, but that's just, that's just opinion based. Don't take that to the bank. Um, and I get, again, I enjoy this movie and if it does get nominated, great. But again, it doesn't deserve a spot just because it made a billion in the box office. It doesn't do that. Because then when you do that, then your award is pointless. And I've always said, an, an award that can be easily corrupted or easily rigged, to me, means absolutely nothing. And uh, even, let me talk about my friend Max. Let me just say that quickly. Max, he runs a channel called Movie Madness and Entertainment. It's a much larger channel than this one. And I'm going to assume some of my subscribers are some of his subscribers. So if you're watching this, Max, or any of his subscribers, I'm just going to say this. He ran an award in December. And... I was excited to be in the award. It was a best YouTube podcast um, of the year. And I, I watched it. I, I or I wanted to win it. So I was obviously putting myself on Twitter, um, Instagram saying, hey, go v- vote for me uh, for best movie podcast of the year. Oh, my God. I just turned on my phone. <laughs> but um, and then I saw a lot of people were corrupting that award. Like other YouTubers, I saw a lot of people voting more than once. And I remember it was like two days after the award began or something like that. And I realized, holy crap, this award means nothing because people are just rigging it. There was no point in the goddamn award anymore. And I told Max straight up to his face. I said, hey, you know what? I don't want any part of this award. Count me out. I'm not even going to be on the stream. So even if I win, I don't give a crap. And to me, it just, to me, an, an award that e- is easily rigged means nothing. And I bring up this because Spider-Man No Way Home, if it didn't deserve it, and it still makes it best picture, then to me, it just, there's no point. There's no point. And again, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. Spider-Man's one of my favorite characters of all time. And I would love a Spider-Man No Way Home to be best picture nominated. But if the critics don't deem it to be there then it's not there. And it's not a comic book agenda. It's not that the Oscars don't understand the fans. It's just the critics deemed it to be not best picture worthy. And even I, if I let's say I'm an Oscar critic, even I don't think it, it's an Oscar it's a it's a uh, Oscar best picture caliber kind of movie. Does it deserve recognition for what it did in the box office? Heck yeah. A billion during a pandemic? That's impressive. That's probably one of the most impressive things any movie has ever done. 
But does it deserve to get Best Picture because of that? No. But anyways, guys, let me know in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts on this? And again, I want to thank my associate producers who are the members and are entered to win a Batman Funko Pop in March. To people who are my members, I want to thank you guys, Pedro Bonilla, Rhea, Cobra Kai Never Dies, and Jedi Sith Master. I want to thank you guys. And pretty soon in two months, you might be getting this in your mailbox. So get ready for that. But thank you guys for watching. Don't join the membership program. And again, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on my social media platforms on Instagram and Twitter at Isaac the Film Geek. Link in the description down below. And thank you for joining us here in the multiverse of movies.